this is Captain Chaudhary. In my last video on SFBM, we talked about uniform beam, we talked about box vessel, uh, we talked about how to find out the shear force at any point and uh, also we had an idea uh, as to how to find out the bending moment in case of a uniform beam at any point that is under consideration. Now uh, diagrammatically I would like to show you uh, how these strength curves are related to each other. Say suppose there is a box vessel, it has got four compartments, right? And then uh, you may have uh, extra load in the middle holds and less uh, weight in the end holds. So what happens is if we try to represent, you know, uh, both the buoyancy as well as weight curves on the negative side for comparison they are put on the same side so this can be considered as a buoyancy curve uh, it's a uh, horizontal straight line because uh, the buoyancy per unit length at any given point is dependent on the draft this is a box vessel because the draft is same forward to aft we would say buoyancy per unit length at every point along the ship is same and that's why it's a straight line. Now if we talk about the weight, we can see uh, the weight at any point in any hold is because of the light ship and because of the cargo. Now uh, assuming that uh, there is this weight of say 5 tons per meter of the light ship and this cargo may be 10 tons per meter. So 10 plus 5, 15 tons per meter would be the weight per unit length say in hold number 1 and 4 and in hold number 2 and 3 the weight curve would be like this because there is more weight in the middle hold. Now if we consider this as a zero line or in general if we say that the load per unit length is equal to buoyancy per unit length minus weight per unit length you know then you can say that the load curve would be as if this is the zero line this would be the load curve. So load curve can be drawn this way. This is the load curve. Load is the difference between the buoyancy and weight and if we have put both the curves on the negative side you know the appearance of this curve that is a weight curve with respect to buoyancy line would be actually the load curve. Now if we calculate what is the area under the load curve and plot another curve in such a way that at any given point the area under the uh, load curve you know to the left of point under consideration suppose I want this point so at this point what is the area under the load curve is the ordinate of the SF curve. That means if I total up this area under the load curve up to here, right? Uh, this area, that means this value multiplied by this length. This area is the coordinate of shear force at this point. Similarly, the shear force becomes zero because this positive area is equal to this negative area and therefore the net that is the total of positive and negative becomes zero. The SF is zero at uh, the middle of this uh, box vessel and suppose if I total up the area under the SF curve and if I say area under the SF curve at any point on the left side gives me the ordinate of bending moment and thereby if I draw a bending moment curve totaling up the area under the SF curve to the left of that point under consideration I get a bending moment curve. So bending moment curve would appear like this and as per our convention when I say load per unit length is equal to buoyancy per unit length minus weight per unit length as per this convention the positive bending moment means sagging. So this curve shows that throughout the ship's length the vessel is sagging right and 
uh, looking at the loading the vessel is on an even keel and there is more cargo in the middle that means the vessel must be sagging now we will try to talk about you know how these strength curves are derived in a ship shape vessel let us see what they used to do in the past and what can be done today first of all let us talk about the weight curve let's say we are talking about this ship and here's a foxhole these are the various holds and you might have the mast house and the holes and then the accommodation so here's the ship this is probably the water line and now if i say that i have to make Uh, a curve representing the weight of the ship now say for example in this portion you have more steel here less steel here probably this portion's weight may be described like this then uh, you might have uh, uh, this uniformly loaded portion of the ship and then you might have you know the anchor chain etc and store over here and probably the representation of that part is like this then you have main deck probably the weight over there can be represented like this and then you have holds you know the weight is slightly more it comes down over here and again the hold and then you have mast house which may be represented this way and so on so this is how i uh, may represent the weight the idea of representing like this is if this scale is tons per meter and this is a horizontal scale obviously meter and suppose we are talking about a distance of 10 meters right uh, let us say from here to here is say 10 meters and this height is zero and this height is say uh, just for example 8 tons per meter this point represents 8 tons per meter this is zero and here is the triangle the area of the triangle is half base into height so that is a uh, 40 tons meter tons per meter multiplied by meter so that means this portion of the ship this portion of the ship is representing 40 tons now similarly this portion of the ship suppose this height uh, represents 10 tons per meter and this distance is supposed 20 so 10 multiplied by 20 that is 200 tons is the weight of this portion of the ship this portion of the ship weighs uh, 200 tons so this is how if i complete the weight curve the total area under the curve would be total area would be the displacement of the ship and now if I have got the displacement and technically by computer if you are able to tabulate each and every plate welding the construction the, the beam girder everything uh, if you consider and tabulate them in this way probably if you take the moment if you take the moment of this area about the base you will get the kg of the ship and if you take the moment of the area about the half perpendicular what you will get is the lcg of the ship so this is how uh, if a computer can take care of the weight of each and every part that has been uh, applied to the ship one can get displacement one can get kg and one can also get lcg so uh, this is how i get the weight curve now let us see how we get the buoyancy curve uh, for that we have to understand uh, there's something called Bonzine's curve. Now what is this Bonzine's curve? The ship may be say uh, divided in say 100 or 200 segments and say we are considering uh, a draft and trim this way 
you have these Bonzine's curves, you know, which appear like this, and so on. And if I want to find out what is the transverse underwater area, say at this particular uh, uh, section, so I need to measure this distance, and probably this distance is a measure of transverse underwater area, which might be like this. And if I want to find out what is the transverse underwater area, as you see in four and a half direction, it, this distance is probably a measure of that area and probably this transverse underwater area would appear like this. And close to midship, similarly, uh, this particular curve will give me, you know, what is the transverse underwater area in the midship area and so on. That means, if I have this transverse underwater area and if I want to find out what is the weight of if this segment was one meter thick, the weight of this segment would be the underwater area, transverse area multiplied by 1 multiplied by 1.025 tons. Right? And therefore, this area multiplied by 1.025 would give me tons per meter of the buoyancy. So, I am trying to write the buoyancy force per unit length and it is found with the help of Bonzine's curve. In today's time, uh, the sophisticated computers that we have, we can get transverse underwater area at any point. You know, so uh, compared to what is given by the Bonzine's curve, today uh, the accuracy might be much higher. So here, uh, at the moment we are talking about buoyancy per unit length. Now here, uh, with the help of Bonzine's curve, we are trying to find out what is the buoyancy per unit length. So if I put buoyancy per unit length uh, and superimpose it on this curve, it might appear like this. You know, it's like uh, 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 the underwater area at this particular point multiplied by 1.025 is equal to you know weight per unit length or buoyancy per unit length at this point which is a representative of this height of the buoyancy curve. Similarly uh, if I find out the transverse underwater area here I will get this ordinate. So uh, once again the unit of buoyancy per unit length can be tons per meter and now similar to the weight curve you look at the buoyancy curve I've drawn in red if we find out the area under the buoyancy curve, you know, it will give a unit of tons because the uh, vertical axis is tons per meter, horizontal axis is meter and the product will be tons. So the total area will be equal to total buoyancy force and total buoyancy force is equal to total downwards displacement force. So that means the area under the weight curve is same as the area under the buoyancy curve. They have to be uh, perfectly equal. That is how the equilibrium uh, takes place. Now, as we could find out Kg and LCG from the weight curve, if we, uh, using the Simpsons, you know, if we find out where is the centroid of this red curve with respect to the base, that will give you Kb for this draft and for this trim. And also, if using the Simpsons, if we are able to find out where is the centroid of this red curve with respect to aft, what we will get is the LCB for this graph and this trim. That means uh, if these two graphs are perfectly drawn by computer taking into account every uh, uh, small detail of the ship, then we can probably find KG, LCG, KB and LCB of the ship. That is for this graph and that's this trim. So, uh, as you can see, uh, the area under the weight curve looks to be equal to area under the buoyancy curve. There are places where the uh, weight per unit length is more than the buoyancy per unit length, you know, and there are uh, areas where 
the uh, values are equal. Well, here we can select the convention. If the convention is the load per unit length is equal to buoyancy per unit length minus weight per unit length, we will uh, get uh, a sagging bending moment as positive and hogging bending moment as negative. This convention we are generally using in uh, the calculations, but many of the loadicators they would use this convention that uh, load per unit length at any point is equal to weight per unit length minus buoyancy per unit length. If we use that convention and try to find out what is the load per unit length, once again the unit is tons per meter at any point. So we can draw the curve this way. What I have done here is the white graph minus the red graph. At any given point, the value of load is weight minus buoyancy. So uh, the curve looks like this. And the next part would look like trapezium. Because you can see uh, at this point, at this point, white minus red would give this. And then uh, this portion looks more or less rectangular after subtraction, right? And the next part would be like a triangle. And the next part also like a triangle. And then you can see that the load curve dips down, okay? Load curve dips down and goes further down and then probably it is like this over here there is more or less similar run and then once again it becomes positive then negative then positive, then negative, trapezium, rectangle, trapezium, and then uh, once again trapezium, slight trapezium, so uh, this is the load curve load curve which we have obtained here is weight per unit length minus buoyancy per unit length. So uh, once again the unit for all the three curves that is the weight curve, buoyancy curve and load curve is tons per meter. So vertical axis is tons per meter, horizontal axis is meter and what you see is the load curve. Another uh, I, I told you the weight curve the total area under weight curve is equal to total area under the buoyancy curve and here once we have got the load curve here I would like to say the positive area under the load curve that means uh, these areas which are above the x-axis the total of this area is equal to negative area under the load curve that is the part of the curve that goes below the x-axis so total positive area is equal to total negative area this is the condition of the load curve. In my next video I will start from here onwards and I will tell you after the load curve how the shear force curve and how the bending moment curve is developed right and uh, we will also talk about the convention looking at the curve on the loadicator how do we know that the vessel is sagging hogging etc. Uh, how do we know where is the vessel sagging maximum. So uh, see you in the next video.